Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for January 7, 2011, and now the news. Yesterday, we told you about an industrial espionage case involving electric car technology from Renault. Today, the French government is directing its intelligence agencies to investigate the role that China may have played in stealing those secrets. France's Minister of Industry, Eric Besson, is calling this economic warfare. And as you folks know, them's fighting words. So maybe General Motors and the Argonne National Laboratory better keep a close eye on their EV technology. They just signed a licensing agreement that will allow GM to use Argonne's new patented composite cathode material to make lithium ion batteries. These batteries are said to last longer between charges, have a longer life, and can be charged at higher voltages. Argonne also announced a licensing deal for its cathode technology with LG Chem to allow its use in battery cells for the Chevrolet Volt. Wow, talk about breakthroughs. Steelmakers are telling automakers they can match the weight savings of aluminum, but still do it in steel. ArcelorMittal, the world's largest steel maker, says it can take 57 kilograms, that's 125 pounds, out of the body and white of a car using steel grades that are on the market today. And it says it has a new kind of steel coming that uses nanotechnology, which can take out another 29 kilograms or 63 pounds. Put it all together and that's a 188 pound weight savings. They say this nano steel is a new kind of steel that the world has never seen before. Most impressively, ArcelorMittal says this weight reduction is the equivalent of making the body out of aluminum, and yet it can be done at much lower cost in steel. Most of the cost savings come from less engineered scrap and lower tooling costs. Prices for used cars are expected to remain strong for 2011 in the U.S. According to Wards, Supplies are low because sales of new cars plummeted the last several years due to the recession, so there just aren't as many used cars right now. Plus, demand is high because the economy hasn't fully recovered, so people are buying less expensive used cars. Also, rental companies are hanging on to their cars in their fleet longer than normal. In the past, it was six months. Now it's up to 18 months. So they're not turning their cars over as quickly as before. According to one analyst, used car prices will not come down until 2015, which is when supplies will be higher. The Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas is bringing us no shortage of high-tech news, from computers and phones to gaming systems and 3D TVs. But the auto industry is also getting a lot of attention at the show. In fact, Alan Mulally is giving the keynote speech there today for the third year in a row. Also, Audi used the venue to show off its new MMI system. According to Autoblog, this next-gen interface has been heavily updated. It's powered by NVIDIA's Tegra chipset, which is the same hardware inside several tablet computers and netbooks. But the biggest change is the knob. Look at how huge it is. That's because Audi integrated a touchpad on top of it. You can scroll, zoom, or even write on it with your fingers. Pretty cool. Well, here's more proof that Chrysler is well on its way to recovery. Beside its product offensive that's bringing 16 new models to the market this year, it's got a gaggle of new products to showcase at the Detroit Auto Show. And its Mopar brand is getting a surprising amount of floor space in Cobo Hall. The Pentastar's parts division will showcase all kinds of tricked out vehicles and aftermarket goodies. One of the most exciting is the Ram Runner. It's an extensively modified pickup that's designed for serious off-roading. You'll be able to transform your own Ram into one of these monsters starting this March when the $13,000 Stage 2 kit goes on sale. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Mopar is showing off a customized Fiat 500. 
the Italian two-door received all kinds of modifications, from body graphics to chrome mirror covers to a new leather interior. The motor parts division is also presenting a spiced up version of the new Chrysler 200. Some of the things on its laundry list of changes include a striking black and tungsten paint scheme and 19 inch wheels plus a ride height that's been chopped by three inches. Speaking of the North American International Auto Show, who's going to win the North American Car and Truck of the Year awards this Monday? That's coming up right after the break. On Monday morning, one of the first things that kicks off the Detroit Auto Show is the announcement for the North American Car and Truck of the Year Awards. So who's going to win and why? Well, that's the topic on this week's Auto Line. Joining me on the show are Eddie Alterman, the editor-in-chief of Car and Driver magazine, and Marty Paget from High Gear Media. Here's a clip that will give you a taste of what the show is all about. We got the Volt, we got the Leaf, we got the Hyundai Sonata. Marty, which one's going to win Car of the Year? I think the Volt will win, but it's not my choice. I think it's a great car. I think it's fantastic achievement. It's fascinating, too. Uh, but I just think that there's a tendency to brush aside the leaf because it's almost like this historic moment is not happening. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is. I think it, for me, the Sonata is the most significant car, though. They're already mm -hmm. selling 150000 a year, and they were nowhere before. Right? That's exactly true. If the, if the cadence was different, I think you'd have winners all across the board. You know, you'd have, you could have Volt one year, Sonata one year, Leaf one year, but they're all right. together this year. But my pick is the Volt. I just think it's phenomenal. And uh, you drive it and you become a believer. The problem is it's going to take a 45-minute drive and somebody on a test drive to, to see that switch over between uh, both sources of power to really get it. Because when you do that, it clicks and you go. I, I think there's going to be a little bit of uh, volt fatigue on the part of the jury because it's one Motor Trends Car of the Year, right. uh, Automobiles, Automobile, Green Car Journals, Green Car of the Year. Right. My prediction is actually the Leaf is going to win this thing. And you can catch the entire AutoLine episode on our website right now. And on Monday morning, we're officially going to find out who the winners really are. And speaking of the Detroit show on Monday, we'll be doing a live webcast from the floor of the show starting at noon Eastern time. We've got an impressive lineup of executives and experts coming on the show. And on Tuesday, we'll even take you on a live walk around so you can see the action as it's happening. But that brings us to the end of today's report on the latest news from the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Monday.